Now, of course, Ipswich confirmed their return to the Championship last weekend with a chance to secure the title this weekend when they take on Fleetwood on Sunday. Ahead of that, me and Betty spoke to the man that's been in charge this season, Ipswich manager Kieran McKenna. Firstly, Kieran, congratulations. You and, of course, the rest of Ipswich Town must be absolutely over the moon. Yeah, we're delighted. It's been a really good season and it's, you know, fantastic to, to give the supporters the ending that they all wanted. Darren knows it's a great football club, such a history, um, such a passionate supporter base and it's it's been a difficult run of years. So it was just great to be able to give the supporters again a whole season to be proud of, but especially the, the scenes that we had at the stadium and in the town on Saturday. That was something that I think uh, the people will remember for a very long time. Kieran, when you, you look at the, the supporters and you 26,000, 29,000 every single home game, um, and they travel really well as well. How much of a, part, yeah. a big part has the fans played this season? Yeah, they've played a massive part. I have to say, our, look, our home record's been fantastic, not just this season, but even in the last few months of last season. Um, Portman Road has been a, a really difficult place for teams to come to, and, and the supporters are a really big part of that, and we want to continue that next season and make it you know, a, a really hostile ground and a difficult ground to come and play and, and a great place for people to come and watch football. So they've been fantastic. Away from home, the, the numbers we get is almost un, unrivaled really and, and the voice they've been in and, and it's a way the way the supporters is great and especially this last run in we've been you know taking over half the stadiums in certain games so yeah it's been a big help it's been a big addition and it's been great to give them something to really celebrate The season of course isn't over you've got one more game left against Fleetwood away that's Sunday at noon how yeah. important is it for Ipswich to get to the 100 points and 100 goals if at all and what would it mean for Ipswich to go up as champions as well how important is that? We've probably spoke a little bit more today about the, the 100 points and the 100 goals, to be honest, because you know one of our big things is trying to control what we can control. And we've tried to do that all season and not focus on other teams. And, of course, to be in this position and be top of the league is unusual, but, but credit to Plymouth for the way they've picked up the points. So, no, our, our focus is just go and deliver one more performance. If we do that, you know, we've got a great chance to be the first team in, in the history of the EFL to get 100 points and 100 goals in the same season, I believe, which would be, you know, an amazing achievement. I think our goal difference is is two away from being the highest in the EFL history as well, I believe. So we have spoke about little things like that today, more so than the title at this point, to be honest, because... You know, we, we can't control that. We can only control what we do on Sunday. Kieran, let me ask you, the club is submerged in history from, of course, players on the pitch to managers. I'm thinking Sir Bobby Robson, now for Ramsey, Sir Ralph Ramsey, excuse me, are just two yeah. that, that spring to mind. You've secured promotion in your first full season as manager after years coaching Spurs, Manchester United, I think it was the under-18s, assistant manager at Manchester United as well. How different was it moving into management and how easy or difficult a decision was it to take the Ipswich job? For how I, I manage, I haven't found it very diff- very different. I think since I've been a youth team coach from Tottenham onwards, you know, you try and improve the players, you try and improve the team, you work very hard every day to make the sessions good to, to help the players. You, you work hard in the classroom and in different ways to help develop the team and develop the players. And that's still been my, my constant work for the last, you know, coming up to 15 years. That's, that's your focus every day. Um, and that's what I try to do as a first team coach. And, and that's what I do now as a manager, of course. There's some other bits with the media and, of course, your, you know, there's a little bit more importance in terms of your one of the, the key faces at the club. But I think day to day, you know, the focus of improving players, improving the team, that's still the, that's still the main bit of the job day to day. And that's, you know, something that I've had a, an awful lot of experience at. So that's came pretty, pretty naturally. I think, of course, making the step was a big decision. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, as a, a fantastic football club that I have a big affinity to. Um, but I knew management was a step I wanted to make and I knew that um, I wanted to do it, you know, at a young age and I wanted to go out and test all the things that I'd worked on as a, as a coach and I wanted to go and develop myself and challenge myself early and, and this was a fantastic opportunity to do that. Kieran, I want to talk to you a little bit about your coaching staff and, and one of your coaching staff yeah. in particular that I do know really well is Lee Grant. Now, I know he's yeah. played a key role when it comes to working with the centre forwards, even though I know he's just a first team coach, but when you look yeah. at the likes of Freddie Ladapo, who's obviously, I think he's hit 16 league goals and then Connor Chaplin yeah. before this season, I think the most he'd ever hit is 11. How much credit yeah. has he got to take um, when it comes to working with these players? A lot of credit. Look, I think all the coach, I'm, I'm blessed with the coaching staff I have with Martin as assistant manager and Lee and, and Charlie Turnbull and Rennie, who does the goalkeepers. I've got, you know, a really, really good staff. And I think all the players would, would speak in strong testament to the work that they do. But Lee specifically has been terrific. So he's someone I really wanted to bring in to my staff and bring into to the building. 
the role is different. Um, he's gone from being, you know, a goalkeeper yeah. to, you know, in essence, you could call it a striker coach. He does coach general team concepts the same as, as all the staff, but he's really focused with the strikers. And he's someone who is, you know, trained with and against some of the best strikers in the world over the last, you know, four or five seasons at Man United. Um, he's someone who's faced strikers from all different, from the different divisions over the last 20 years. And I think there's so many correlations between how goalkeepers train in small numbers in a small group, focusing on, you know, the key techniques, on details, on angles, on, you know, what surfaces to use and how I, how I wanted, you know, somebody to come in and work with the strikers. It's a different job. It's a specialist job. Yeah. And in general training, you don't always get, you know, what you need as a striker in the main content of the session to improve. So I wanted him to come in and work, you know, with a small number of players really focused on the pitch on the in the meeting room um and i knew that he had the personality to do it and i knew that with his you know his mentality that he would pick up lots of things on the way about the coaching process and he's uh he's managed to do all that and yeah he, he's been a big addition to the staff we're, we're delighted to have him i'm sure he's going to go on and have a really big career as a coach Kieran, you've now got that difficult second album haven't you you're in the championship after such a ridiculously successful um, run in league one realistically what are the expectations realistically is it to get straight back into the Premier League first time of asking and also with regards to your squad do you have to bring in a few players have you talked about budgets yet look in terms of our ambitions we don't want to put an upper limit on it I think going up to any division the first thing you have to try and ensure is that you stay in that division as a minimum and I think that's has to be the approach for every newly promoted team we have to stay humble you know go into it you know knowing that it's going to be a big step up and a big challenge and we need to be ready for that but on the other hand, you know, I don't want to set any upper limit to what we can achieve. The team's improved a lot in my time here. We'll try and improve again this summer, both in terms of recruitment and the work on the grass. And um, we want to go and really attack the season. You know, we're, we're, um, we've got good momentum as a team, good momentum as a club. And we want to go and attack the season and be positive in every game, attack every game with, you know, our playing style and the way that we believe in and see where it takes us. Kieran, last one for me. I mean, I've got to ask you about a fixture that I'm sure a lot of fans will be looking at. A fixture we've not seen since 2019. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, the derby against Norwich. I mean, are you looking forward to managing in that one? And do the players understand how much that fixture means to the supporters? Yeah, I think it's on everyone's radar already. The supporters have been singing about that one since around January. Yeah, it's it's on all our radar, of course. <laughs> it's it's going to be a fantastic fixture. It's the one that the fans are already most excited for. It's a rivalry that you probably don't um, really get to grips of until you move down here. It's uh, Of course, I knew there were rivals, but it, I didn't know the strength of it. Mm -hmm. The people of, of Suffolk are such a, in general, such nice people and such a, um, certainly a, a more relaxed way than um, in the bigger cities that I've lived in. But the, the passion for that rivalry is certain intense. We've got some great fixtures to look forward to, but, um, you know, a renewal of that rivalry is certainly going to be really exciting. Kieran, listen, thank you for coming on. Uh, before I let you go, I'll say what I said to your captain, Sam Moores, who was on our show. Um, our producer, Joe, is a massive Ipswich fan. He's, he's now looking at me yeah. like a kid would look at Santa Claus on Christmas Day going, oh, my God, this is the greatest <laughs> day of my life. But I'll say to you what I said to yeah. him. If ever you get a text from producer Joe, you can block him. Yeah. Feel free to block him. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll have him in. We'll have him in. Aaron, you can bring him to a game. You're due at Portman Road soon. Yeah, um, yeah. On. I will. Um, yeah. I'll bring him. Don't worry. I'll bring him. We'll Good charge time. him. We won't just give him a free ticket. Um, Kieran, listen. Um, Jay, Genuinely, genuinely, I know you're a busy boy. Thank you so much for coming on. It's a real pleasure speaking to, to managers, certainly managers that have done incredibly well at big clubs as well. So we're, we're really honoured and flattered you've uh, you managed to make some time for us on TalkSport. Thanks, pal. Thanks a lot for having me.